Well, it's kind of lined up right. Ladies and gentlemen, goblins and ghouls, ghosts, we missed a little bit with the uh, pumpkin basket, but it is Halloween, so here's all your candy. Welcome to League Unlocked. There's really actually not that much candy in here, so we hope you're still going trick-or-treating out later today because you're never too old to go trick-or-treating. That's actually a lie. After probably 13, it's a little bit weird, and I'm sure most people get a little bit uncomfortable when you uh, show up as a trick-or-treater at that age. But nonetheless, just have fun. Dress up if you want to, and uh, welcome to League Unlocked. Today we are, we were going to do a spooky episode and kind of look at all the scariest skins, but there's really not that many. Any Teemo skin is the scariest, so that kind of saves you that entire recap. What we are going to do is look at the 10 best games in the history of the World Championship because we are approaching that final four, and we're not talking best series, we're doing individual games, uh, the best ones that we've had since the installment of the World Championship way, way, way back in season one and there's a lot to get through so let's get right into it in at number 10 we're going way back to season two and we're talking about clg versus sk gaming in the group stage and this is a huge throwback uh, you might not recognize a lot of these names and this was a pure example of innovation for the boys on CLG because you know the meta in season eight and nine, it was all about teleport. You're running three TPs uh, across any team comp and well, they did it way back in season two and that was the innovative strategy. They also had a promote in the bottom lane and if you haven't been playing League for at least six years, you don't even know what promote was, but it was an old summoner spell that boosted up a minion in any lane and made them absolutely insane. Uh, but this game was actually pretty slow for the majority of it. They had that one TP play bot lane, did CLG, and then it went silent for a long time until SK picked off two members and they looked like they were gonna end the game because they had a Baron buff. All right, guys, let's close this one out. But you forgot about the triple teleports that were coming out of CLG. Double lift does his best 2012 double lift impression and is split pushing with the Graves while his entire team's base is dying. And he's just farming creeps. A Graves versus a tank Shen. Yeah, that's gonna be favored to the Graves. And then here come the TPs. First it's Boy Boy on Diana who comes in and tanks the turret shots because uh, apparently Diana's meta and her shield was actually good. And then in comes Link uh, uh, also, or Big Fat GG, excuse me, on the Orianna. And then everybody forgets about Boy Boy on the other side. He flashes to channel his inner ex Peke and win the game. And the worst part is, talking about ex Peke doing this on Cassidy, it's the second time that this happens to Ocelot on SK. Yellow Star is flaming teammates afterwards. It was just a good time to be a fan of Professional League of Legends. And by the way, that loss pretty much eliminated SK from the World Championship. CLG, it ended up being their only win anyways, so didn't have huge implications on the outcome of the World Championship, but for changing the meta and the absolutely insane ending that ensued, SK and CLG find themselves at number 10 on our list here. Number nine is EU and tiebreakers, and some of the Early days of that, it is Gambit versus Samsung Ozone. Uh, and Samsung Ozone is a team that went through very different changes. And you will recognize most of the roster because this is Samsung White that won in 2014, except it's Dade in the mid lane instead of Pawn. And this was the tiebreaker to get out of the group stage. And early on, Samsung had a huge lead, a couple thousand. It looked like it was going to be... The Korean team rolling into groups, uh, into knockouts until this botched turret push slash dive in the bottom lane. It ended up costing them four kills eventually, two turrets and a dragon. Everything completely swung into the side of Gambit. It looked like they were going to run away with it until the other way it is Dandy who's going to secure a Baron for them and then it's a bunch more kills. All of a sudden they're right back into this game. The 6k gold deficit is completely cut away and Gambit, oh no, things are not looking great for them. And this is, by the way, the game that kind of made the Dade award as he ults in with the Twisted Fate, dies instantly, pops his flash anyways. This was the tournament he had a terrible run of things and this game in particular, he 
destroyed, got destroyed STF in a Cassidy lane. And the game ends uh, basically by Genja getting a delayed Penta kill on his Trinity Force Kogma, which everybody criticized him for. Why the hell are you building that item on the Kogma? Uh, Double Lift critiqued him. Uh, tons of the analysts and commentators did. And of course, it ended up becoming quite meta in season four and five to build that item on the Kogma. So. The Time Lord strikes again, a Gambit would advance to the knockout rounds, and Samsung Ozone didn't even make it to top eight before they swapped mid laners with uh, Pawn and ended up winning the World Championship the next year. But that tournament and that game in particular, if Dade is playing even close to the level that we saw throughout 2013 and 14, Samsung Ozone win that game handily, but he completely uh, Oops, the bed, you might say, and that's why the Dade Ward was coined by Monte and Thorin from that matchup, and it's too bad for them, but Gambit, EU, and Tiebreakers, that's kind of where it all started. On to number eight, and it's a relatively recent game. You'll probably remember it well, and when we're doing the criteria for these games, you've got to talk about implications and excitement, and this was one of the most exciting games we've seen, Fnatic versus Invictus Gaming in that tiebreaker matchup in 2018. This game had some of the best mechanical uh, outplays and individual performances in terms, again, of raw game mechanics that we have ever seen in a match. This is obviously the two teams that ended up meeting in the World Finals, but you had this Broxa Lee Sin play, uh, and where everyone was talking about Broxa as the MVP of the group stage. Well deserved for these kind of plays that he put out on the Lee Sin and other champions, and obviously Rookie had an incredible run. Caps eventually, I mean, he got destroyed in the laning phase, but bounced back to get very fed on the Akali, and you even had your boy Duke, who subbed in for the Shy in this matchup, and he almost single-handedly saved the game or got IG back into the matchup with plays like this on Irelia, and really it did speak to how absolutely busted and insane uh, Akali and Irelia were as champions in this entire tournament. But, I mean, this game was just non-stop action. There were tons of kills. It was back and forth. The early game was looking pretty good uh, for IG, or at least Rookie, who did get incredibly fed on that LeBlanc. So this game, and really that entire group stage, all three games that IG and Fnatic played were absolutely incredible to watch. But this was obviously the one that stood head and heels above the rest, and that's why it comes in there at number eight. And... That's how quickly we move on to number seven, which was World Elite in season two versus CLG EU. And if you remember this series, it was very much, uh, well, it was delayed multiple times because they had LAN issues with internet, which is absolutely insane and speaks to how different the times were uh, in season two. They actually had to, uh, like, to cancel games they were 50 minutes into a game and they had to redo the entire thing which is absolutely insane but it was game two and world elite had already won the first game it was best of three this is quarterfinal action so they were one game away from eliminating clg they had a huge early game lead but we know that the mo of clg eu in seasons two and three was play for the late game pick frog in something that's going to scale insanely well like the Karthus, which is exactly uh, what they did. They finally found a team fight around Baron that got them back into the game. And then there was more fights just outside the base of World Elite that really got them back in the game and actually put them in the driver's seat. But the way that things were going early for World Elite, you had Wei Zhao uh, popping off. And remember that this was peak season two, World Elite, the team that won IPL5, the most contested tournament of all time. So you'd think they'd be safe with an early game lead, but you see CLG EU get back into the game. And then towards the end, the very last team fight, you could tell just how excited the boys from Europe were. Finish, 
Now, I would like to say that communications have come a long way seven years later, but that pretty much is still what uh, a lot of team comms sound like towards the end of games that they're not expecting to win. It's just a whole lot of yelling and the odd champion name that they do scream out. But WE versus CLG EU comes in at number seven. Coming up after the break, you can never question, never underestimate just what kind of noise a wildcard team can make at Worlds. Hello all you ghouls and other creatures today on Halloween as we count down the best games at Worlds that we have ever seen. Single games, we're not talking best of series, and one of the best series was SKT versus Misfits, so you kind of have to pick a game from that series because, again, we're isolating a single one, and it's hard to pick, but you got to go with game four, which was... Uh, Misfits so close to eliminating the two time defending champions up match point up two to one in the series. You already had the Ignar Blitzcrank and the Leona games and everything. All the momentum was rolling the way of Misfits and they even were looking very good in the early game. This is of course the tournament where Bang I would say heavily underperforms, but uh, Misfits are diving inner turrets at 20 minutes. This game, this really looked like the end of the SKT era, the SKT dynasty before they even reached semifinals. You even had Misfits grabbing a Baron. Everything was looking swell for the boys from EU to commit the biggest upset in history until this play comes in and they get a little bit too excited. They can see the finish line. They overextend quite a bit, actually. I mean, you see the turret is still at 70% health, and Faker and Bang on the Rise and Tristan are able to clean this fight up. It's still very early on in this game. It ends up being four kills to SKT. Fully gets them back in this game, gives them uh, some footing, and then it doesn't matter how tanky this Cho'Gath is. Remember again, it's the Ardent Sensor meta, and I mean, they didn't even really need Ardent Sensor in this one for Bang to pop off because he's the Tristana and still very fed. The Realm Warp just cleans up a few more kills for SKT. All of a sudden, Misfits were stuck on six kills for a very long time. And then the four-man Realm Warp in. Again, if Bang takes that, they probably lose the game. But the Trist is untouched in this fight, ends up being a Quadra kill. And this was the chance Misfits had to close out the series. They couldn't get it done. That one misplay uh, was all that SKT needed, but just the sheer excitement that Misfits had in this match. I know you could talk about the other two games that they won, but they were never really that close. This one was actually back and forth, and game five was very slow paced, so you couldn't really have it there. Game four, SKT versus Misfits is in at number six. At number five, you have the still best wildcard run that we have ever seen, Albus Knox versus the Rocks Tigers, and they came in to their first, uh, their second match, both tied at three and one. This battle, this matchup was basically to decide who's gonna get first in this group, which is absolutely insane. Uh, that the wild card team and the pretty consensus second best team, maybe even best team at the entire tournament because they won the LCK and the Rocks Tigers, they were battling for that first place spot. And the early game, it was actually all ANX. They were fully in the lead. They were playing a great game until you get a Baron stolen by the Syndra. And then Peanut comes in on the Lee Sin to steal another two Baron steals over to the Rocks Tigers. The team fights were very back and forth. And the macro that the Rocks Tigers were actually putting forth were, was incredibly impressive. You have this uh, terrific play from A Miracle on the Lucian, where he just cannot be killed. The Tarek and Poppy are just sitting there, doing their very best to peel for him on that Lucian, and they do uh, just enough for him to stay alive. But the team fights were absolutely insane. Obviously, this game ended up going north of 60 minutes, and at that point, even the casters were absolutely shocked about what Albus Knox was doing. Kuras, I've got a miracle. Nexus is keeping alive again. Nexus over Kira, trying to take down Prey, but the Nexus just a little too much for Lucid. Going for it, the hero of ANX, and it's not enough just yet. Rock still alive again. All these minions are hitting the Void Link still. The Nexus is going. He's the greatest team. He's getting it. He did it. Oh my God, they did it. ANX just took down the Rocks Tigers.
if you'll ever see a bigger upset than that probably not and it wasn't like it was just a fiesta that the rocks tigers could not adjust to it was actually a really well played game which is crazy to say uh, from a wildcard team at worlds but that was the case on to number four where you have the world championship final between samsung galaxy and skt circa 2016 this is the year before samsung ended the dynasty that was sk telecom uh, and this was right after SKT beat the Rocks Tigers in semis, and they were up 2-0, and things looked to be done and dusted in Game 3 uh, with a sizable early game lead. It ended up being 7-0 for a start for SKT, but this fight around the Baron area is where Samsung all of a sudden got back into the game, and this looked like it was going to be a speed run finals, quick 3-0, everyone's going to be out of here quickly, but Samsung had different ideas, and it was a couple of misplays from SKT that really allowed Samsung to get back into this game. They had four dragons to their name at this point, and uh, the second Elder Dragon of the game is where things really went crazy, and this is around the 70 minute mark almost. This is the infamous or famous Ambition Elder Dragon Steel, and right from this point, with four dragons and second Elder, well, it ended up being three uh, inhibs and a Baron buff to go over to Samsung, and just look at these cannon minions absolutely decimate. There's five Baron buff cannon minions absolutely decimating all of the Nexus turrets for SKT. Obviously, that ended up being a almost oh-so-close reverse sweep for Samsung, but that Game 3 was absolutely legendary out of them, and they absolutely pushed SKT to the brink, and that was what fueled their vengeance for the very next season in Season 7. Coming up after the break, we move on to the top three, and history has truly shown us that one lone auto attack can completely change the landscape of the scene. Hello, you beautiful beings. Welcome back to League Unlocked. We've reached the top three greatest games in the history of the World Championship. And number three, if you're talking best series of all time, it's number one. But to isolate a single game between the Rocks Tigers and SKT is a lot more difficult. Uh, the 2016 semifinals, most people believe it's the best series of all time. We went with game two because you have the implications. This is the first time you see the support misfortune, which completely changed the landscape of this series. And just the overall quality of gameplay might have been the highest in this game. You have dives, turret dives being executed like this from rocks. Look at how does nobody die? They actually escape here with nobody dying. The flash and the heal uh, popped from prey. Absolutely incredible. And then of course, yes, this uh, Misfortune Ash combo that absolutely decimated Wolf and Bang for two games in a row. And a lot of these team fights were very explosive. And it wasn't just a complete stomp for the Rocks Tigers. Some of these fights, SKT very much got back into it. Uh, the Baron did go over to Rocks, but they ended up grabbing tons of kills their way to kind of get back into the game. Uh, obviously, they still died a lot as well but SKT despite having a big deficit was still in this game to some degree and the main reason again that we have this as number two is or from game number two that is is it's going to be the ash arrow later on as you can see but SKT this is where they survive and get a bunch of kills and this was still SKT at their peak they had beaten rocks before they didn't play them in the finals because they got eliminated by KT Rolster but I mean you have the Ash arrow play from Prey. You could really argue that game three could also be here. It has the 2v4 from, uh, from Prey and Peanut. Maybe game four, you have Bengi's Nidalee performance. But game two, uh, because it gets rocks right into this series, the beginning of the Misfortune pick and the Ash arrow play, absolutely deserving of the third best game ever at the World Championship. For number two, it's a recent one again. It's 2018, the quarterfinals between KT and IG. It is game three with KT Rolster's entire season on the line as a perennial favorite for the entire tournament. The Shy gets disgustingly fed on that Fiora in the top lane and 
KT tries to do everything to shut him down. And at the very end of the game, it's just enough for them to keep their tournament hopes alive. Max is throwing number one, taking down the half HP. KT looking to end it right here, right now. Ming taking down the half. It's Shy versus Snap at the base. Same time, Otto's going to be taken very low. Yukau barely going to be kept alive. Score taking down the one quarter. Snap's nearly going to be killed now as well. Def taking so low. The blade call is not able to find him. Def goes in a killing spree. It's the Shy still in the base. It's KT looking to try to stand and fight if they can. The Shy has made his way onto the inhibitor turrets. On to the Nexus turrets. They're going to be taken down. KT still marching. It's a base. Race. The Shy's under the blue nexus. KT's under the red. Who's going to win? The Shy will not. And KT takes it to game four. Holy crap. <laughs> they won the top side 4v4 with Baron Buff on. KT roster still are in world. This you know it's a great play when even the observers are completely jabated. I still... Can't wrap my brain around the fact that Smeb TPs out of his own base while a Fiora is killing it to go help his own team push, and it ends up being the difference maker. An absolute insane ending. Obviously, KT did not complete the reverse sweep. However, uh, number one on the list is pretty similar to number two. It ends in absolute heartbreak at the Nexus. Of course, it couldn't be any other game but OMG versus Fnatic at the 24, uh, 2014 World Championship. And... The implications were huge in this game because the loser was basically eliminated as they were both 1-2 and two coming into this matchup. It was incredibly back and forth. We know it was an absolute marathon. And we also know that there was double-digit inhibitors taken in this game, which again just speaks to how much trading around the map was going on, how close these team fights were. And there were not that many kills for a 70-minute game. You had Expeke defending his base in a base basically 1v4 on that Syndra, and that's what got out the original TPs from Soaz on the Rumble to try and end this game. Of course, you know this play. It's been immortalized in the Ignite video from 2016. Uh, I mean, it's one of the best moments and calls that you've ever seen, and you can critique what Soaz does on the Rumble. Uh, he pops the home guards here, but why didn't he use it on the minions to clear so that, I mean, there's so many things you could nitpick about. Uh, he doesn't really flash that much. I guess he does flash away from the Kha'Zix, and then that's the solo kill to Loveling, and then Xpeke comes in to try and finish it off himself with Cyanide on the Elise, and of course, it ends up being one auto attack away from the Nexus going down, and it would still take a little bit of time. It would be north of 70 minutes before OMG finally find that game-winning team fight for them that actually is a 5v4 for them, which is insane because uh, their support is down here. The Thresh is not even part of the fight. So it's a 4v5 that clinches the win for them. And the most impressive stat is, of course, Go Going goes 5-0 and 15. He goes deathless in a 70-minute game absolutely ludicrous. I don't think a game will ever top uh, just the absolute heartbreak that European and Chinese fans would have felt in that game. OMG obviously ended up going all the way to the semifinals. That's it today for League Unlocked. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. As always, have a happy Halloween, and we'll catch you next time.